Title Update 8 introduced many scaling changes in favor of players who have always wanted to stress test their builds versus legendary White Tusk NPCs. Now with this move up to the highest difficulties that the Division 2 can throw at a player, your builds will need to be specialized and fine-tuned. This will include not only adjusting your playstyle, but min-maxing your builds to the final few percentage points to give you and your squad the best chance of completion. What's going on agents? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and today I will be bringing you the second episode in this legendary build series to help you assemble and fine tune your builds to handle heroic and legendary difficulty missions. But before I begin the build guide, if you haven't yet taken the time to smash the sub button, it would be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. And with that out of the way, let's begin the build breakdown. This legendary healer build is the absolute strongest healer build that you can currently assemble in the game. And with it, you will be able to keep you and your squad fully healed and damaging enemy targets, which is the key to success when tackling the White Tusk on legendary difficulty. So let's dive right into the overall build concept. And this healer build is built around three pieces of Alp Summit, two pieces of Murakami Industries, and then gives you a bit of flex for the sixth and final piece. Now I'm going to show you all those options and also how this healer build stacks up versus the much more well-known hardwired healer as well. For the mask, I have equipped the first of my Alps gear pieces with repair skills and skill haste as the attributes, and this will be your central build theme throughout the build. I finished out the mask with a repair skills utility mod. For the body armor, I am using the first of my Murakami pieces, again with skill haste and a max repair skills attribute roll. Now it is essential that you get Overwatch as your talent on the body armor, as when you stay in cover for 10 seconds, you and your allies will receive 12% weapon and skill damage as long as you remain in cover. And notice that the lore text doesn't say for a certain amount of time. That buff remains as long as you are in cover or performing a cover to cover move. I finished off the body armor with a repair skills utility mod. My holster is the second piece of Alps Summit gear with repair skills and skill haste as the attribute rolls. Now since I want this build to be as strong as possible, I will be looking for a suitable Alps replacement holster with a better repair skills roll than I currently have. The backpack is my third and final piece of Alps gear with repair skills and a max skill haste attribute roll. Just like on the body armor, the backpack needs to have a specific talent, with that being Safeguard. Since you are not going to be out front and attempting to DPS targets, you should maintain full armor most of the time, and when you do, your skill repair will increase by an insane 100%. I finished off the backpack with a repair skills utility mod. I am going to skip over the gloves for right now and jump down to the knee pads, which are my second and final piece of Murakami gear with skill haste and a max repair skills attribute roll. Okay, back to the gloves, and this is where this build has a bit of flex, depending on what you have available. Now you could use a fourth piece of Alps, although it will not give you any further brand set bonuses, or you could use Hana Yu for the skill tier and plus 10% skill haste. But here is the major curveball in this build, and I've started to use and fall in love with this one thanks to my friend, the Padron. Now he spoke to me about the benefits of using the BTSU gloves. And like many of you, after Warlords dropped and the BTSU gloves were completely reworked, I took a quick look at them and just moved on. The sleeper effect that not many players know just how strong it can be is Transference Overclock. And let me first explain it and then how it can benefit your squad. TO refreshes all allies skill cooldowns and grants them overcharge for 15 seconds for detonating your hive. And remember, there are two ways to pick up your hive. First, you can just run directly over to it and pick it up off the ground and therefore keep the remaining charges and begin the hive cooldown from there, or you can detonate the hive and it will begin the charges cooldown from a lower starting point. Now here's how strong TO can be, and it has to do with your squad mates. You will normally be running with two to three glass cannon DPS players to do as much damage versus the white tusk, and invariably, one of them will be bursted down and will need to use their revive hive to res and re-enter the battle. 
Now, since they are not going to be using any gear with skill tier, their reviver hives will take forever to finally cool down, and this is where TO and the BTSU gloves come into play. If you have just finished a really difficult section and one or more of your squad mates have their reviver hives on cooldown, or maybe you are still in combat and they have already used their hives and stand a chance of getting downed immediately, this is where you can detonate your hive. Now, once you do this, it will refresh all your squad mates skill cooldowns and give them back their revive hive in case they need to use it immediately. This TO effect can only be used once every two minutes and will also grant them overcharge for 15 seconds. Now both of my BTSU attribute rolls are really low and I can't wait to find a better pair to equip on my build full time. For the weaponry, I am using the designated hitter SR1 marksman rifle entirely due to the perfect reformation weapon talent. Now just for landing a headshot, I am granted 40% skill repair for eight seconds. So the idea here is to pop a headshot and then use my chem launcher or hive to apply the 40% additional skill repair to my chem or hive heals. For the secondary, I am still using my trusty Baker's Dozen M1A for when I do need to pitch in and help out my squad mates, as even with me using six skill tiers and no offensive attributes, this rifle still hits hard and can help down targets. For the specialization, I am using the survivalist kit for many obvious reasons. Crunch time gives you 10% additional skill haste while in cover. Triage specialist grants 15% increased outgoing healing and distributed repair grants not only me, but squad members within 20 meters repairs from me using one of my armor kits. Now overall, survivalist is the strongest specialization to use and I recommend it for any serious healer build. For the skills, this build uses the Restorer Hive, and with this much skill repair and skill tier, pushes out just shy of 400,000 HP of healing per charge, has 36 charges, a range of 13 meters, and refills once every second. Now, if I am able to reach overcharge, the healing effects of this hive just become absolutely mental with even more charges, healing percentage, range, and skill health. Now, for my hive mods, I am using a healing mod, skill health mod to make it a bit more resilient and a plus four repair charges mod for even more charges. The second skill to use is the reinforcer chem launcher for a bit of touch ups if a squad mate takes on a bit too much damage for even the hive to handle or they venture outside of my hive healing radius. Tier six grants more ammo, radius and healing while overcharge once again goes crazy with even more ammo, radius duration and healing power. Now there are only two mod slots on the chem launcher, so I am using a skill haste mod and a heal mod for a bit more healing strength. Okay, so here's the comparison I spoke about earlier in the video, and I am in no way talking down to anyone using the more popular hardwired healer build, but it just isn't the strongest healer build you can assemble. Let me show you. Using the four piece hardwired gear set with the same overwatch body armor and safeguard backpack as on my build, here are the stats on screen, with my healer build on the left and the popular hardwired healer build on the right. As you can see, this build has over 14% more repair skills, 4.3% stronger hive heals netting around 17,000 HP per tick, and 4.3% better chem heals netting around 58,000 HP better heals per chem launcher volley. Skill haste on my build is 85.6% versus 44.5% on the hardwired build. And since you are not using the body armor or backpack, feedback loop is not as strong as it could be. However, since you still have the automatic skill refresh for using or canceling a skill, which boosts your outgoing repairs by 10% for 20 seconds, and this can occur at most once per 20 seconds. Now the hardwired build is still really strong but the build I have just shown you pushes out more heals at a more consistent rate and doesn't require an agent to have these specific hardwire gear set pieces. Now, if you can loot and incorporate a pair of BTSU gloves with high skill haste and repair skills attribute rolls, these gloves can really add another element to your healer build by refreshing your DPS squad mates revive hive cooldowns and will ultimately lower your legendary wipe rates. As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts concerning this healer build concept in the comment section below. 
If you haven't yet done so, please smash that sub button for more detailed division content. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. If you feel like supporting me and my full-time YouTube content creation, please look to the video description for links to my Patreon account and Buzz Boutique merchandise store. Follow me on Twitter for all my latest thoughts concerning most things gaming related with a heavy emphasis on the Division franchise. I would once again like to thank and recognize my fellow Duck clan mate, The Padrone, for his insight into this build concept. I'm going to end this video with highlights of me using this exact build on Capital Building Heroic with randoms. And until my next upload, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.
Agent needs assistance. Alright, when you're ready, set up a flare so we can get that briefcase somewhere safe.
bunch of hostiles headed to you. Case is secure. True Sons lost their stronghold. And General Ridgeway has been neutralized.